Okay, so when my hair is atrocious, I gotta get some hair medicine to see if I can fix that. <laughs> my teeth. Okay, so I wanted to speak about a book in the Bible. The Catholics have a book called, it was, sometimes it's called Ben Sirah, sometimes Sirach, sometimes Ecclesiasticus, depending on the translation. And it's a book of wisdom that Protestants leave out. And we're going through, you know, Donald Trump, his campaign is a lot about, you know, the working class and how they uh, are important, right? And stuff and great America, all that, right? Okay, so this book has a book on trades and crafts or has a, a, a section about trades and crafts. And here's what it says. Leisure gives the scribe the, the chance to acquire wisdom. And a man with few commitments can grow wise. How can the plowman become wise? Whose sole ambition is to wield the goad, driving his oxen, engrossed in their work, his conversation limited to bullocks, his thoughts absorbed in the furrows he traces, and his long evenings spent in fattening heifers, Similarly, similarly, with all workmen and craftsmen toiling day and night, those who engrave seals. Forever trying to think of a new design, concentrating on catching a good likeness, and staying up late to get the work done. S similarly, with the blacksmith sitting by his anvil, he considers what to do with the pigeon, the, the pigarin, I don't even know what that is. The breath of the fire scorches his skin. As he contends with the heat of the furnace, the noise of the hammer deafens him. His eyes are fixed on the pattern. He concentrates on getting the job done well and stays up late to apply the finishing touches. Okay, so this is about people staying up late for their work. Who live in town similarly with the potter sitting at his work turning the wheel with his feet constantly on the alert over his work each flick of the finger premeditated he pummels the clay with his arm and with his feet he needs it he concentrates on applying the glaze right and stays up late to clean the kiln all these people rely on their hands and each is skilled at his own craft a town could not be inhabited without them. There would be no settling, no traveling, but you will not find them in the parliament. They do not hold high rank in the assembly. That's right there, the key thing. But you will not find them in par parliament, and they do not hold high rank in the assembly. They do not sit on the judicial bench, and they do not meditate on the law. They are not remarkable for their culture or judgment, nor are they found frequenting the philosophers. They sustain the structure of the world and their prayers concerned with their trade. Right there, the end. But they sustain the structure of the world and their prayers concerned with the trade. So this is what the issue is. You know, the left wing is like, oh, they're just not educated. Oh, they just need educations. But it says right here, you know, how... These people, and or or Donald Trump's followers are not educated. They won't. That's why they're voting for him. But they're these people. But they sustain the structure of the world, and their prayer is concerned with their trade. And so, this say you know tells you kind of it's not really wise what the left wing is doing, and that Donald is uh, doing something that's that's considered wise. Not everything he does is wise, but it go on and on in here where wisdom books can explain it's not wisdom wise to do what he does. But here's one um, on the opposite side. 
medicine and illness. Treat the doctor with the honor that is due, is his due, in consideration of his services, for he too has been created by the Lord. Healing itself comes from the Most High. Healing itself comes from the Most High, like a gift received from a king. The doctor's learning keeps his head high, and the great regard him with awe. The Lord has brought forth medicinal, medicinal herbs from the ground, and no one sensible will despise them. Do not a piece of wood once sweeten the water, thus giving proof of its power. He also, he has also given some people knowledge, so that they may draw credit from his mighty works. He uses these for healing and relieving pain. The druggist makes up a mixture from them. Thus, there is no end to his activities. Thanks to him, well-being exists throughout the world. My child, when you are ill, do not rebel, but pray to the Lord and he will heal you. Renounce your faults, keep your hands unsoiled, and cleanse your heart from all sin. Offer incense and a memorial of fine flour. Make us rich in offering as you can afford. Then let the doctor take over. The Lord created him too. Do not let him leave you, for you need him. There are two time there are times when good health depends on doctors, for they in their turn will pray the Lord to grant them the grace to relieve and to heal and so prolong your life. Whoever sins in the eyes of his maker, let such a one come under the care of the doctor. So uh what we can see is that uh there's no end to medicine and uh it's talking about herbs and stuff and um so natural medicines are uh spoke of in the bible but then when it says there's no end a lot of the ma the, the the medicine that we have today the chemicals in the herbs they have extracted and and changed around and, and stuff but it all comes has to come from the earth some way uh, but also um, it's talking about uh, you know like we went through with COVID and it's kind of borderline because the church was like no you because they used uh, the fetus to test the, the the embryo or whatever or something to test uh, COVID medicine, but um, I don't, I don't know. I was kind of torn in the middle because I always, of course, stayed. I've tried, <laughs> I've been trying to stay in the middle most of the time. You know, uh, they want me to choose sides. I'd say, well, you know, I never wanted you to be born that I choose a side either way be on your side because <clears throat> uh, it hasn't been good I can't recall anything good about left or right you know I, I don't have a lot of memories of good this politics or, or good government or, or uh, good people you know I, I meet people every once in a while and um, I'm just thankful that they seem alright and the rest of them are sick and kind of inherently evil seeming but that's that could be because I live in Oregon I don't know oh I went to California it wasn't too good there either yeah and there was other people that were kind of in the same boat where there's like yeah you, you know we were all just kind of wondering how evil anybody's going to be around us but I don't know. I mean, the Mexicans are that way. Mexican residents. The Cholos, I mean, they were like, I don't know. They're just a total different people. I was like, well, you know, you're not Mexican. You don't seem American to me because I'm really American in the Senate. And you're, you know. And um, the residents, they were like these harmless Christian people, seeming. And, you know, they're they not like the gang members Donald talks about. They were all the way the opposite way where they hated the gang members and they didn't know what to do about it.
the ones I met working, they work like hard, really hard, and, and like hardly get days off. Like at the print shops, I remember the binary. They're, they're, those guys work a lot of hours, print shop guys. A lot of them are residents, Mexican residents. Guys in the fields, they work really hard, really nice, neighborly people. But, uh, I don't know. They seem to have, like, a good community. It just seems like they took away white community because their gay people decided it was their... They're going to be authorities over everybody, and they didn't care about white family anymore. All the people living in the heritage, and it was their community. So now the Mexicans... They get to go around and meet each other, kiss and make out in public and everything. And then the white people, like, you know, white girls got to worry about getting raped by shit and stuff, you know. <clears throat> Gay rape by bull dykes. That's the way the gay people want the community. But there's also in here, and I've got to find it, and if I find it, I'll put it in here. It's about um, giving your your slaves your last name and um, your own name. And what it says is if you not to give your slaves your, your name, lest they rebel against you. And... I don't know that's exactly why African Americans have been so rebellious. But when they were given the, the Anglo names they have, that it kind of branded them like a like a cattle brand, you know, as a slave. And very servient. And nobody wants to be that Serbian. And then, um, so when they think of their name, it's like, so John Doe, the African, was named John Doe because after his slave owner and his descendants are John Doe the slaves and not John Doe the Anglo, right? So their heritage, they can't, now that they're free, they still have that John Doe name and it's more like a cattle brand because they don't have to do with the ancestry of the John Doe's. And um, they can't, like, I mean, the rest of the Doe people they don't identify with, right? Their heritage and the order and the community of that. And so they really kind of scars them that their own name is had to do with people that they have nothing to do with and I think that causes the rebellion because it's right in the book not to do it of Ecclesiasticus uh, 